Welcome, everybody, and thanks for tuning in today to episode 74 with my very special guest, Rob Shanahan. So please welcome Rob Shanahan. And here he is. Hey. Hey, there you are. Hi. Good to see you, buddy. Welcome to my office. It's a great looking office. Yeah, not great. bad. It's a great looking office. You know, I've had a lot of guests, Rob, as you know, for the last almost two years now, I've had uh, some really good, good guests. And, uh, and, but I can't say that I've had any as handsome as you. I guess I'm going to just come right up and say that. <laughs> uh oh. <I'm>, I <laughs> That's very kind of you. <laughs> you know the weight of my heart. I do. I do. I'm going to get in trouble for saying that, but no, it's, it's a, it's a pleasure to see you, my friend. And uh, Thank thanks for being here today. I have to say, man, this is the coolest thing anyone could do during the pandemic. Have a freaking drum show live from my drum show. What a great, great idea. And you are the perfect guy to do it. Hats oh. off. Thank you. My and brother. I've been enjoying the show as much as everyone. And uh, it's just really cool. All the drummers get together. I love it. I love it. Me too. Me too. You know, and, and it's, I'll just say it's interesting. You know, it, I guess it sort of took the pandemic to, to make it happen. It's something I'd thought about, you know, sort of in the back of my mind, wouldn't it be cool to do something with, you know, all our, like we talked about all our mutual friends and, and, uh, and, and I think, you know, for a lot of these guys too, um, that I've had the last couple of years, some of them maybe don't get as much camera time as others, if you know yeah. what I mean. And, and so yeah. it's been kind of fun to, exp I hate to use the word exposed, but, um, you know, give some of these guys a little bit of a spotlight that certainly deserve it, that, that don't always get it. So, oh yeah, I feel the same way with my work, with my photo work, you know, drummers are always in the back of the stage. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't get a lot of the limelight. Some do, but uh, you know, I wanted to bring the drummers front and center. And uh, I think that's what I really enjoy about shooting all the great drummers is spending time with them. Not only that, I mean, yeah. we'll get into that. I mean, we have lots to talk about with that, but just giving the photographers their due and using my photo skills as best as I can to make drummers look and uh, be as awesome as they can to the public, you know? give them the recognition and the admiration and you know the drum community we get it we love our drummers all our great drummers we we put up on the pedestal and all that but you know my thing was to bring them more into the mainstream and do what i can in that regard you've done an amazing job rob i mean it's just it's your work speaks for itself i mean any any anyone that's that and and people may not even realize how much of your work that they're seeing you know when they see magazines and and uh, and you know i mean it's phenomenal and I, I i i want to applaud you because um you managed to capture and i think it's because you're a drummer yourself and also because you're a great photographer but you managed to like you say um sort of get in there deeper maybe than what a lot of other really good photographers too. There's some great photographers out there that we all know, but you managed to sort of capture this, this humanness and this, this other thing that that's so great when you, you know, when you'll see photos of Ringo and Charlie and Steve Gadd and, and this book that's just chock full of so many. Um, there it is. We'll talk about. Yeah. Yeah. This is just, I appreciate book. the words JV. I really love that. And I love that you get it. I know you do. I know drummers do. And, uh, you know, being able to hang with drummers, talk about drums, talk about drum grooves and all the favorite drummers that we love. It creates a whole different atmosphere at a photo shoot. It doesn't become yeah, a yeah. photo shoot like, oh, no, I got to look a certain way. You know, drummers get a little anxious or, you know, maybe there's not a lot of comfort comfort there with uh, drummers getting their photos taken or, you know, whatever reason. Me, yeah. I'm like, no, we're not doing a photo shoot. We're doing a drummer hang. Oh, yeah. And I brought a camera. We're going to take a few shots. But this is a drummer hang. We're going to talk drums. Within two minutes, that barrier is dropped, and it's just me and another drummer 
sitting there talking about all our other favorite drummers and gear and whatever it is. And, oh yeah, let's do this photo. And then that's when the energy happens. And that's how, um, you know, that's when the magic really starts happening with the photos. And that's, yeah. I'm glad you pick up on that. And, you know, one of the best compliments that I get about my work is everyone looks so relaxed. Everyone looks like they're having fun or you got into their soul and it's, it's, it's not forced and there's a lot of emotion in the photos and I couldn't ask for anything more. That's it. Cause that's my goal. And you know, the old photo uh, 101 is find what it is that you love to photograph and make that your living. And that's what I did at a, a long time ago, decided after my five year stint <laughs> in pro sports, you know, I was shooting pro sports for a long time and uh, yeah, you know, my love of football brought me to the, the sidelines of the NFL games and then Major League Baseball and NBA. And I was shooting all the great athletes. And that was cool in its own thing. You know, shooting Michael Jordan is as cool as shooting, you know, Steve Gadd. They're both the top of their game. And yeah. uh, but I never got that one on one relationship with Steve Jordan. I, I, I Excuse me. Um, <laughs> Michael Jordan. Michael yeah, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You never get that one-on-one. with Steve one. Jordan, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Steve is another animal. And we're going to talk about Steve Jordan because I have some really cool things to share with that. And I just can't believe, you know, what's going on with Steve's life and how great that is. But, uh, you know, like shooting the athletes and, and the major A-list, you know, big-time pro athletes was, was cool. But it just wasn't where my heart was. And when I started shooting musicians and really, uh, you know, concentrating on that, that's when the magic happened. And when there. was that, Rob? So, so you, you've been a photographer for a long time. I mean, you know, you, you, you've started high school. I'm guessing high school. Yeah. You started as it. Yeah. Yeah. My mom bought a camera for the family. And uh, in fact, uh, right here, baby. Wow. This little Pentax ME with a 50 millimeter one, four lens. I must have shot a thousand or two rolls through this thing and just fell in love with it and, um, you know, moved to California with big dreams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people. And I just kept working and going at it. And here I am talking to you, John to Christopher, <laughs> the most amazing man in the drum industry. I can't uh. believe it. I want to come over to your house and get on your drum kits. Look at that premiere kit over there. That's set up for me. Come on. Come on. I know. I, I wish I wish I had all these drums when you were when you were last out here, which was a number of years ago. I remember you were shooting Joey Kramer. Yeah. And we, we got to hang out a bit. That's you know, right. And, yeah. By the way, <laughs> I still hear about this from Joey. So we got to tell the backstory. So uh, I don't remember the year, but I remember it was May because it, it was on my birthday when I did the shoot with Joey. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next day we had made a plan to meet at the Zildjian factory. So at my shoe with Joey, I'm saying, hey, tomorrow I'm going to see JD at uh, Zildjian. Want to come hang? He's like, yeah, I'll come. So I arrived, Hillary and I get there, and you guys have that sign out front, welcome. And it said, welcome, Rob Shanahan and Joey Kramer. I remember. <laughs> we told them you were coming. So I got top billing over Joey Kramer. I thought it was so funny. Yeah, yeah. I have a picture you know, of it somewhere. And he, uh, he, he probably gave me a hard time if I... I he had oh, yeah. to have. Yeah. I, I told him, I said, Joey, did you see the sign out front? <laughs> I get top billing. Uh, I know it was a last minute add on and it was nothing about me being top billing. But anyway, we had a good factory tour. And if you remember correctly, and I have the photo, uh, as we're going through, you have that Buddy Rich kit set up on that high shelf, like way up yeah, over the yeah. road cases. And I'm like, Oh my God, it's Buddy Rich's kid. You know, how many times have I stayed up late to watch him on the Tonight Show and just like blowing my mind as a young drummer in my jazz band and my high school band. And there's a freaking kid. And I'm like, <laughs> JD, I'm going to get up there for a photo, can I? And you're like, yeah, nobody's asked. So I climb <laughs> up there. It was high up on a shelf. Yes. Yeah. And I got up on that kid and you took a couple of photos with my camera and uh, they're here in my office somewhere. Oh, I hope uh, I didn't. I hope I didn't. I hope they came out okay. Because no, I'm they're no great. They're me on Buddy Rich's drum kit. It's very, very cool. So That's anyway, great. I have a collection of me on different drum kits, like like uh, Alex Van Halen's and Tommy Lee's and 
uh, Charlie's and Ringo's, all these great, great cool. drum kits, just being able to sit at their kit. And, you know, I call that their office, sit in the office and see how they see everything. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It is. Yeah, I know. I know that you're right. And there's something about that too. And I haven't sat behind as many as you have, but when you, when you actually sit behind a kit in a venue, you know, whether it's Charlie's yeah. or somebody's and you, and you look out and you kind of get their perspective on what they see. It's pretty amazing. You yeah. Think. Very, very cool. Yeah. I always thought, yeah. what's that like playing in an arena with 50,000 fans? So let's get back to Steve Jordan. So, you know, he's doing so amazing with the stones and going through the, and I know we're going to get into Charlie and all that, but yeah, yeah. while we talk about, you know, what's it like in the arena. So, uh, Two days after the Stones played here in LA, uh, which I was at, Steve asked to meet for breakfast. So I get to go have breakfast with Steve mm -hmm. Jordan at the hotel where the Stones are. And my, my emails are beeping. Do you hear that? Can you hear my beeps going off? I didn't hear. I, no, I didn't. You can't hear it. Okay, good. Maybe it's only here. I've muted everything, but some, for some reason I'm getting notices that stuff's coming in and I warned you I would. <laughs> I tried to mute everything, but my computer is very lively in the morning. So getting back to Steve. So I go meet Steve uh, two days after their show for breakfast. And I got to ask him everything you wanted to ask about oh. rehearsals and sitting for the first time with those guys and playing. And, you know, they rehearsed in Boston. And, uh, you know, he went in a day early. And Don McCauley, I hope you're listening. Hi, Don. Uh, you know, he went in the day before to kind of work out the drums with Don, get everything set up. And he told me Mick was there. Mick wanted to run through everything with just he and, and Steve. And he said it was amazing going through all wow. the songs and just the two of them, drums, harp, maracas, whatever, just the two of them. And I thought me in that position with Steve Jordan, like if I was called to fill in for Charlie, which I would have loved to have done. And I know all the songs I've been playing on my Hollywood Stones for 26 years. We'll get into that too. But I thought about that, just sitting there playing with Mick, how much fun that would have been. And oh, man. Yeah. man, just so cool. So anyway, the first live show, he said, it's like being on a rocket ship. And I'm like, no, Steve, it's like being strapped to the outside of a rocket ship and like hanging <laughs> on for dear life. And he's like, yes, that's it. And it was just, I'm sure, just so amazing. And, uh, yeah, you know, he said, my only thought was don't drop a stick. That's all I can do. If I don't drop a stick, I'll be okay. And he's better than okay. He's just phenomenal. And yeah. it's, it's really cool. You know, it's funny to hear that because, you know, I think of a guy like Steve Jordan, it, it makes me feel good to know that he's human like we are, you and me, and like his, like, he's concerned about dropping a stick. You know, you'd think like a guy like Steve would be the last thing he'd be worried. He's like, am I going to remember what that, where that change is? Or am I going to remember, you know, what, however the arrangement for that song? I mean, not that yeah. these Stone songs are so hard to remember, but, but they have different, you know, there's different arrangements that they have, but but, you know, it's just it's so cool to hear that he's thinking, like, I hope I don't drop a stick because that would be what I'd be thinking, you know? Well, I think <laughs> that is the, 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 the biggest fear of all of us drummers, the, yeah. the, the root evil, <laughs> dropping a stick. Anything else oh. can happen. Stim symbols can fall over, break a head. That's all fine. But dropping a stick. No, that can't oh, happen. Man, no, that's that's yeah, that's no matter how good you are at, at recovering from that, you know, I've, I've dropped plenty, you know, and I try to have one ready to go, but there's, there's, that can just get in your head as we know, in in such a crazy way, you know, it happens. Just, yeah. It when, happens. when you do that. So, so let's, let's jump backwards a little bit. Yeah. And when you, when you were talking about how you started, um, got interested in photography in high school and um, kept at it and, you and you were a drummer at the same time playing in bands and in, in Minneapolis you grew up in, in I grew up in many uh just west of Minneapolis 35 west miles of Minneapolis. west of downtown Minneapolis yeah 18 miles from Paisley Park I was gonna say okay yeah 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 and I graduated high school in 84 so you know you can do the math and you can yeah. figure out that was like the heyday of Prince wow and was it ever yeah. It was it was huge in Minneapolis, although that wasn't really and I don't don't know why 
because he was so amazing and so great, but it wasn't really on my radar. I mean, that's maybe not the, the word to use. He was definitely on my radar and I knew all about what he and Sheila E were doing and all that. Mm. But, you know, Van Halen was my thing. Motley Crue, Led Zeppelin. Yeah, Aerosmith. no, it's, yeah, it's understandable. Those were all yeah. my boys. And, you know, I was always like, yeah, Prince, all right. Yeah, yeah, okay. But looking back, I didn't realize at the time you know, what an amazing artist mm. and how cool that was happening so close to my house. And now when I fly home and drive from the airport back to my community where I grew up, I go right by it every time. And I'm like, wow, there's Paisley Park. Now it's a yeah, whole different yeah. thing. And, you know, Sheila was there when I was in high school and I had a poster of her in my dorm room at Minnesota <laughs> State. And it's like, oh my God, look at this amazing girl drummer. I love her. And yeah, I end up becoming yeah. like, you know, she's one of my besties. And I've been shooting all her records and DW ads and Peisty ads. And, you know, we, we talk all about the Minnesota years and, and our, our roots there. It's, it's pretty cool. That's cool. But yeah, That's really 35 cool. miles due west, uh, downtown Minneapolis, you know, small little farm community. Uh, beautiful community, great people, hardworking people. And, you know, I have deep roots there. I go back and see everyone. I was just back there in January. Classmate of ours passed away. So I went and saw a bunch of classmates. And every time I'm home, I go and see my high school band director, Mr. Ron Schreer, the most amazing dude, turned me on to all the greats like Duke Ellington, Buddy Rich, Louis Belson. Here, listen to these. He's given me all these great records and songs to listen to. And that's great. Our high school jazz band was freaking top notch. We were swinging. And I got in that band in my seventh grade because no one else played the kit. So I'm in seventh grade playing with all the old kids, seniors and juniors. Oh, man. Yeah. And they were whalers, man. They were freaking awesome. Really great. And, uh, I got to really dig in and I got into the big band jazz stuff and I loved it, loved it, loved it. And so you, you, you know, have a lot in common with our friend, Greg Bissonette, because it sounds a lot like Greg's Greg. whole scene, you know, like, like, you know, school band, big band. Yes. Background, yes. Greg from Michigan. Jazz. We talk all about that, you know, it's yeah. like yep. Midwest. Very similar guy. growing up with that, you know, a drum line, marching band, concert band, jazz band every you know derivative of with the drums i was on and it was great and every morning 7 30 we had practice on one of them either we were doing the jazz band or the drum line or the whatever so it was cool it was a lot of music and i loved it loved it and greg man just amazing you know and one of my dearest friends and for a long time well not a long time covid hit and we'll talk about my COVID band and all that, but yeah, I yeah, bought an electronic will. kit for my, for my room, for my drum room. So I could play at all hours of the night and whenever I wanted. And uh, it's a great kit an Alesis, beautiful, beautiful electronic kit, wood shells, great feel. I hate the symbols, but you know. No, but you know, it's, it's amazing how, how far they've come electronic drums. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like in terms of like what I, I still think of them as being, you know, I mean, I worked for Simmons. I remember what they were like 30 something years ago. And Oh, I remember uh, those. Yeah. But I, I mean, they really those. are. They, they make a lot of sense. If you, like you say, I know Greg has an electronic kit too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, that's, that's where I was going with this. So yeah. I'm practicing away and got a double kick pedal and I'm working on all that stuff. And when Alex Van Halen passed, I went and I've done this before and there's probably a handful of drummers that may have done this. I went to hang with Greg and just do a Van Halen day in his drum room. You know, he's got the two drum kits in his drum room facing each other. Yeah. Put yeah, on yeah. Van Halen and we'd go to town and like every song, it's like, yes, yes. I remember like I shredded on all these in high school and Greg's like, man, you know, Van Halen, it was so much fun. And I, I thought, Hey, Greg, why don't I just come see you every, every other Wednesday? So we made a, we made a sketch and uh, I've been studying with Greg Bissonette every other Wednesday for, I don't know, over a year now. It's been really cool. And that's so great. I love it. And we, we go and hang, we do like a half hour hang and catch up on what we're doing. And then we drum for an hour and we finish with some Van Halen tunes. And then we go to kick ass tacos and have a Mexican lunch. <laughs> and uh, it's one of my favorite days. And I look forward to it every other Wednesday. And uh, I just love Greg Bissonette so much. He's a brother from Me another too. mother. And, you know, we tour on the Ringo stuff. So 
Man, just yeah. amazing to have guys like that as my pal. I, I got to just give a quick uh, Greg story. I, similar, not, I don't, I don't get the, the pleasure of seeing him every other week like you do, but a couple of years ago when I was out there for Nam, we made a, 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 you know, a, a date basically for me to come up to his place. I was staying you in the it. valley at, at, at Rick Murata's house. Oh yeah. And yeah. And he said, um, come on up and we'll, we'll play double drums. And I, and, and I'm like, Oh no, Greg, come on. No. And he's like, no, man, come on. We'll play to some Beatles tunes. And, and I'm like, and I, I just wanted to see, we were going to have dinner anyway. So I go up to his place and um, we played similar to what you did, except we, you know, he took it easy on me. We played some Beatles songs, the two kits face to face yeah. in his little studio and yeah. play for like an hour and all the fills. He's like, you know, Greg, it's like, we're, we're coming up to a, to a, I don't know, think of a song like, um, ticket to ride or something and he's letting yeah. me play all the fills and Perfect. you know he it would stop and he'd point the stick at me you know and and he'd be going yeah johnny d you know and then we Isn't that it fun? was great it was so much fun it was so great and afterward i felt like yeah you know i didn't i didn't really embarrass myself i actually really had so much fun it didn't even matter and we had a great hang afterward and i just I just love the guy to pieces. You said it perfectly. I didn't want to embarrass myself. That's my goal. I yeah. not to embarrass myself for Greg Besson. I mean, it's uh, easy to do playing face to face with that guy. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. It's the most nerve wracking, but lovely thing I've ever yeah. had to engage with, with another drummer. But like Greg said, look, Rob, you can play. You know how to play. You've been playing forever. You play with your band and blah, blah, blah. I am going to, as he calls it, I'm going to build your drum vocabulary. So that's why we're working on stuff that I normally wouldn't play. Bossa Nova or yeah. hey, listen to this Brazilian groove or reggae or whatever. You know, stuff that I wouldn't necessarily work on, but building my vocabulary. Or what we'll do is we'll just like have a Steve Gadd hour. Like we'll play all Steve Gadd stuff or we'll work on Steve Gadd stuff and just mind blowing. And he'll show me something. He's like, okay, try that. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I feel like I'm <laughs> like in a, you know, Japanese language class, you know, trying yeah. to like work one on one with a translator. It's like, I don't know that great. He's like, yeah, you do. Come on, do this. If you can say it, you can play it. And he's got all yeah. these things and he's like the greatest instructor. And so what we do is he'll show me stuff. I videotape it, we'll work on it. And then I'll get back to my electronic kit and I got the videotape and I can chart it out or work on it a little deeper. And it's just great. Really great. That's great. Yeah. No, he's, he, he has to be the ultimate teacher. He has to be just because of all those things you say, all those all those qualities that he has his personality and his patience and um you know everything and and his unbelievable you know the, and the fact that he's you know he's and people probably don't realize that he actually went to college yeah you know to to be i mean he he's he's certified to be a teacher i mean that's he went right. to tech, north texas state and that's right and he has the credentials to to teach you know so but so so jump in i'll jump back one more time and so you you moved out to la yeah. Uh, in the in a van. In a van. Yeah. I was 22. My brother, TJ, came with me. TJ, also a drummer, an amazing drummer and yeah. uh, double kick. He's like a Neil Peart. He's big into the, you know, bigger drum kits. I resize. I'm now the Charlie kit and I love it. You know, it's my thing. And yeah. Uh, anyway, my brother, 18 years old, me, 22, we had like 400 bucks between the two of us. I had that camera, we had a drum kit, and we had this van, and we moved to LA, and my parents, my sisters, everyone in the community, what the hell? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, something's got to happen. I'm not staying here, and I can't handle another Minnesota winter, and I'm gone. And, wow. uh, you know, we had a going away party, and a few friends were like, man, good luck, you're going to do it, you're going to make it. And a lot of people were like, yeah, I'll see you in a couple months. Yeah, like, no, sure. you are. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we arrived in L.A. and there it was Sunset Strip, all the rock clubs, all the music stuff that I've been reading and dreaming about. And, you know, when you grow up in a community of a thousand people, the okay. window to your world is the magazine rack with all the, you know, I was before MTV, before Internet, before whatever. So whatever you saw on TV or read on a newsstand, that was your window to the world yeah. and then all of a sudden 
that window opened and I climbed out and I'm there. I'm in, I'm in this fantasy world. I'm in Hollywood. It's like, okay, this is a, a chance to reinvent myself. I can do it whatever I want. Every day I wake up, it's for me. I'm not working for an old boss. I'm not working at a job that I hate. I'm doing whatever I can do for uh, for me. And I had goals yeah. and I had dreams and I kept my nose pointing that way towards those dreams. And I didn't let anything else come in between me and those dreams. And I don't know, that's it. And how long after you got there, Rob? So you got there in the, in the late eighties, right? Was that July, July, July 12th, 1988, which ironically 88. is my daughter's birthday. Wow. Not 1988. She was born in 99, but July 12th. I was going to say, yeah. She, yeah. I was still living there at the time. I actually moved back here um the end of 1988 but oh, okay. yeah i mean it's almost i could have moved like, into your apartment i could have you taken over your life <laughs> be thankful you didn't <laughs> that would have been very nice of you i wouldn't have had to sleep in that van but you know what it was van life <laughs> before van life yeah yeah and i never ever felt homeless i wasn't a homeless dude i was a rock and roller living my dreams i never felt worried i never felt scared i never felt what am i doing here i'm like man this is awesome I get to yeah. like drive around LA. I get to go to the beach in Venice and check it out and meet people and, uh, you know, just start doing my thing. And you eventually yeah. you start meeting people and we'd go hang out at the rock clubs at night. And I got a phone number from a guitar player stuffed it in my pocket, like four or five, six months later. I don't know. You lose track of time. I don't know how long it was, but I'm getting down to like my last five bucks. <laughs> Yeah. And I called this guy. I'm like, hey, man, remember me? And he's like, oh, yeah, you're that you're the drummer from Minnesota and your brother. I'm like, yeah, I need a place to crash. He's like, come on up. He gave me directions how to get to his house up in Granada Hills. And uh, wow, we made it up there, spent our last. In fact, I remember I had a dollar left. I put a dollar in gas in that van and got up to wow. his house. And I don't know, this is crazy, right? That's and, amazing. Uh, I, I, I'm crashing at his house and he was super cool and his girlfriend would cook for us and she was super cool. And uh, I needed a job and I started walking the neighborhood and it turns out there was a huge photo, uh, a pro photo lab adjacent to a photo studio right there. And I walked in, I need a job. And they started quizzing me about black and white processing, color processing. I'm like, oh yeah, I know that. I know the answer. I knew all the answers they were throwing at me. And uh, this beautiful yeah, you, French girl, yeah, you knew what you, yeah, this beautiful French girl named Baloo, who uh, interviewed me, she's like, Oh, great. Can you start Monday? I'm like, hell yeah. So I started and started meeting folks and started shooting in the studio there. And uh, it's kind of kept building my portfolio and meeting people. That's how it goes, man. Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> and then you and so how so that was the that was the late 80s say or or maybe you did that into the early 90s and how soon until you started shooting um i didn't meet you i think until the early 2000s i'd say yeah maybe i think that's so but you had already been shooting for like yamaha and dw i think at that point or yeah some of the industry <laughs> companies peisty i think so yeah that goes from that shooting experience in the studio and and all that that was kind of my uh my if you will, spring training or football camp or photo yeah. camp, you know, photography every day, every day, playing at night, trying to find jams to go play with. And a couple of the guys that worked in the lab were guitar players. So I'd hang with those guys and we would, uh, we were doing blues gigs and whatever we could get. And they were really good guitar players. They played together very well, kind of like the, the Keith Richards and Ronnie Wood weave with the blues. Yeah, they yeah. were very fun. I loved that. And um, you know, just kept shooting and, uh, eventually I know there's so much more we could talk about, but I'm going to try and cut it. We'll, we'll do a little edited version, but you know, eventually I'm shooting the major sports wow. and there's a long story on how I got there, but I don't think these drummers watching us care about that. But <laughs> the next thing you know, I'm on the sidelines shooting football, baseball, NBA, and, uh, and in the meantime, I'm shooting all my musician friends. And I met Scott Crago. Yeah, yeah. In Venice. Uh, eventually, I moved out of that guitar player's couch. 
got my own apartment <laughs> with my brother. And then I realized every free second I had, I was driving over the over the hill or through the canyons to the beach. I love the beach coast and I love Venice. So eventually I moved to Venice, got a little beach apartment. And there was a little bar on the Venice um, boardwalk called Venice Bistro. And every Sunday night, this band called the Pine Mountain Logs was playing there. And it was uh, Scott Crago on drums and uh, Mark, um, Mark Lennon and Kip Lennon and all the Lennon brothers and cousins singing and playing guitars. And those guys ended up singing background for, uh, uh, anyway, that's off the side. That's a, another story. But yeah. listen, so I met Scott Crago. He and I became instant buds, as you can imagine. You know, he's the coolest guy and great, great drummer. Guy. And yeah. we had the whole drummer hang and he needed a headshot for um, Peisty Symbols. And for Stevie Nicks, he got the gig with Stevie Nicks. Uh, he was so excited to tell me, and he goes, I need a headshot for the tour book. So I did it, and they loved it. And then Rich Mangiacaro from Peisty called me up. Hey, we want to use it for the Peisty catalog. And by the way, can you start shooting drummers for us? Do you want to shoot some other drummers? I'm like, oh, hell yeah. So I started shooting, you know, like Stuart Copeland and Sheila E. And, you know, all oh, they're great, great artists. And it was amazing. It was cool. Did you, Rob, did you shoot that ad with, um, with Jeff Picaro and Joe Picaro? I never met Jeff. Partner? No. Okay. So it was, it was pretty Jeff. early. It was before you. Yeah. 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 I'm after yeah. Jeff. Wow. No, you did some beautiful work for them. I mean, you know, and as a competitor working for Zildjian, I'd see that stuff and I, and I knew who you were. I, I don't think I'd met you yet, um, but I admired it. I was like, man, this, this is like really top notch. Thank um, you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I remember when I finally met, I might've been through Scott Donnell or Joe Testa, one of, one of those guys, or might've been Rich Manjikara that I met you and, and you were just the nicest guy. You were like, so, not that I expected anything less, than, you know, other than that, but you were like this really humble, like, oh, thanks. I'm glad you like my work. Thank hey, you. we can only be who we are. Right. Right, right on. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, if you ever gotten an email from Tommy Lee on the yes, bottom of yeah. his email, it says, be yourself. be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Taken. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And my drive across the country from Minnesota to LA, my promise to myself was I was never going to forget who I was and who I am, you know, you can't change yeah. that. And I don't want to put out any false pretenses. I am who I am. I'm a music lover. I'm a drummer lover and I'm a photography lover. And I'm just thrilled that people dig my work enough that they keep calling. And um, absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's all you can hope for. So, well, let's talk about some of these other, other um, clients or drummers and, and Anthony Cusina, actually this, this ties in perfectly because he asked the question. Good. We um, got questions coming in. I love oh, we get questions. questions. Yeah, we do. We got some good questions. This is um, Anthony's asking Rob, what were your feelings when Ringo brought you up to play his drum? Well, that's, that's another question. We'll ask that too. Uh, play up, play his drum kit for a few songs in 2008. How much fun is that? We drove think... Ringo and Greg Bissonette over here, like with the biggest yeah. smile on his face and <laughs> Billy Squire right there. Like, yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, this is freaking awesome. But you know, what's so awesome about that, which is going to blow some minds right now is that was in Minnesota. Yeah. At yeah. Mystic Lake. And there in the front row is my mom and dad, my sisters and like within the first 10 rows, I had my high school band director, a bunch of friends. And uh, here I am playing with Ringo and their mouths are like, <laughs> yeah. And my high school band director is like this. Oh, wiping I'm away sure. the tears. Yeah. And it was like the most amazing experience, you know, not just playing with Ringo, which is cool in itself, but to make that full circle, like living and living, uh, leaving and yeah. living in a van and uh coming back and doing that i mean that's pretty pretty freaking special and in your hometown like with your mom and dad and your family there and like yeah are you kidding that's that that's like that's like made for tv movie stuff, yeah that's you know pretty cool I mean? stuff. it's unbelievable i know i i remember hearing about that and um i remember seeing you on that tour in 2008 because you i was looking for it today you took a great photo of me and joey kramer we came to oh, to yeah. the 
All Star Show in Boston that night. Yeah, together. there's a really and, cool photo yeah. of of, of uh, Scott Crago, Greg Bassina, Joey Kramer, and me and you that exists, and I love it. It's so freaking awesome. And yeah, here's something fun. This is a really cool story. So that show, I don't know if you remember, but Ringo broke a stick. I don't. And remember he that. never breaks sticks, and he's playing, and all of a sudden. And he's like, whoa, look at it. I broke a <laughs> stick. Most guys would just drop it and pick up another stick, but he made sure we all saw it. And I got a photo of him with that broken stick. And then um, after the show or the next show, I don't remember, Jeff Chonis hung on to that stick and I got a picture of Ringo holding it. And I got that stick. Oh, so man. check this. After the show, Scott Craig goes like, man, did you see Ringo broke a stick? Holy crap. So I sent that stick. The photo of Ringo holding the stick to Scott Crago, he it blew his freaking mind. Oh. He has that stick, the photo of Ringo holding the stick and his laminate, you know, backstage, whatever, all access laminate from the show. He has it framed and hung in his drum room. And to this day, he says, that's the coolest thing anyone ever has done. You could have kept that stick and made it your, your own thing. And I'm like, eh. How cool a friend are you for doing that, Rob? That's so, man, that's... You well, he's so you, responsible yeah, yeah. for, you know, the beginnings wow. of my career into the drum industry, shooting all the great drummers, you know, he was the one that was the big advocate of getting me to meet John Good and, and Don Lombardi and Scott Donnell and yeah. uh, Rich Mangiacaro, you know, you guys, Joe Testa, uh, you guys are all Andy Shreve, you know, you guys are all my buds and my working partners and, um, we Likewise, just all have this really cool thing going. And for a number of years, like 20 years, over 20 years, we were doing all these great ads together. And, yeah. uh, you know, the drum community is a small, lovely community. And I'm just so honored and blessed that I get to work in it and create art that people dig. And, you know, meeting all the great drummers. Come on. And, like and, you're, and you're playing in your band. I want to talk about the Hollywood. Yeah, look at that. And, and you your see band? it's a little out of focus back there, but it was it. Were you looking at this That's picture? That's it. <laughs> That's you it. Sent, but you sent me this picture, and How it's like, oh man, it's. And here's the original head. The three wise men. That's the original head. Wow. That's the head. See that no. I will not send to Scott Crago. <laughs> <laughs> no, that no stays sure. here in my office. But I have that, and I have that beautiful symbol signed by Charlie. That was from 2019. Um, Zildjian sent me a few. We did this really cool Zildjian video of uh, Charlie, and did one of Hal Blaine. Mm. Uh, I don't want to give anything away, but there's some really cool videos that you know you guys will all be seeing really soon, and that signed print from charlie of his beautiful dw icon snare drum uh you know just collecting this stuff is just a blast for me and this photo which is now on the cover of one of the modern drummer yes. tribute to charlie up uh, issues uh, I wanna, just i want really to take fun. a second and talk about that because i i talked about that last week and in fact um maybe as we get toward the end um, we'll, we'll what we'll time is it bit. i know we could talk for five hours it's, um it's well, we got a, we got a little bit more time, but Billy okay. Amendola wanted to just jump in for a minute, and um, and he's in the waiting room. But we'll, we're going to bring Billy in in just a minute. I thought when we talked about the Charlie covers, all four of these beautiful covers that you. Oh, shot, thanks. I'm glad you have them. Very cool. Have, and and I want to thank David Frangioni who sent these to me, um, who's the the main man at Modern Drummer Magazine. Um, these are just so beautiful they are just Thanks. a work of art this one's still in the plastic so it's it's kind of like i'm still doing my, my grandmother's favorite photo thing. of all time i mean that's the one i mean that's it and you know let me tell you how that worked and that's going to bring us back to this i had some items at arm's reach that i wanted to share with everyone okay so we all know about that day when i got ringo and charlie and jim to uh, together that photo that you just showed yeah. But what people haven't seen is this, because I've only made four copies. Check this out. Look at this cool little book. That is, and here's the, wow. cup, the, the drum head on the back. So uh, I sent one to all three of these guys, and I have this one here in my office, and you'll never see this anywhere unless you come to my office. But here it is, all the photos from the day. 
so much freaking fun it was so cool so check this out wow charlie called to thank me for this book and for the day and you know what he said to me rob you made me look like a movie star <laughs> oh, so man. that photo oh. on the cover of modern drummer show it up again so people can see it the one where he's sitting at the kit yeah the one that's still in plastic yep this one yeah that was 2013 uh yep. here in la at staples center right after sound check i got charlie back up on the kit and got my light all set, ready to go. Charlie gets in. I'm like, Charlie, just grab your sticks and turn towards me. And I said, Charlie, you are a movie star. And he gave me that smile, click. That was it. That's the shot. That's the photo. Wow. Just that. And it was like a first take kind of thing, like just that one shot and you got it. Yeah, well, I did a couple tests just to make sure my yeah. light was good. And then I directed him with the sticks and he turned towards me. And really, that's the, the you know, the first. What a smile he has, man. That's yeah. It's, just, I also want to point out Rob to everybody because people, you know, they, they really need to, to get MD digitally and see this unbelievably beautiful personal remembrance that you thank wrote. You. Thanks. It's, it's, oh man, it's, it's, it's so beautiful and so deep. Thanks buddy. Thank yeah. you. It was an honor to be asked to do it. I mean, what an honor to be asked. I mean, yeah. 15 year old me sitting in my bedroom, thinking about yeah, someday, I'm going to be and I'm sitting there with modern drummer, I used I had the subscription, I was a subscriber since 1978. When they launched, yeah, I was 12 years old, and I would see it at the at the drum shop, uh, downtown Minneapolis, there was a tiny little drum shop that's gone. Now it's a wig shop, but I'd go in and they'd have a rack with the magazine, I'd make sure to get it every month. And then I subscribed and I couldn't wait for that magazine to come read it cover to cover like 10 times yeah. like I memorized them and I know I think one day I'm going to be doing the cover of Charlie and the tribute is just mind blowing. It really is it's just so it's it's such a work of art I want to just share with people a couple of quick um, things that per, on a personal note that you've done for me. Um, let me see if I can do this. I got a new computer last week. Oh, and I'm still, uh, yeah, thanks. I'm, <laughs> I'm still fun. figuring it out. It is. It's fun. I, I don't have all the photos in it yet. So I'm, um, but I want to just show a couple of things here that when you were talking earlier about your um, capturing photos and, and um, why isn't this doing this, Rob? I want to, I don't know why it's not. Well, all right, I'm going to try one more thing. Hang on a You're second. trying to do a screen share. I'm trying to do a screen share and I'm seeing the photo, but it's not. Um... Bottom center, there's a green button, screen share. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it. And then when I go to the photo, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing where, I, where I'm going to. Uh... Uh -huh. Hang on a second. No. Well, you know what? I apologize, everybody. While you're um, doing that, let me share something with everyone while we're here. We'll take a little commercial break. <laughs> so good. check this out. See this? I'll take it out of the box. See this cool little box inside yeah. the box. I got this from Hal Blaine. Wow. That's when an he was a security bag. guard. Wow. Remember that? You yes. know the whole backstory behind this, right? Yeah. So I'm out at Hal's house in Palm Springs. We were hanging, doing some photos and just chilling out and took him for a drive in my 1956 Chevy, which he loved. And we're listening to Beach Boys and all these great songs that he played on. And, and he goes, I got something I want to give to you. I get back to his house and he gives me this badge. I'm like, wow, so great. That is, that is amazing. Honorary Lieutenant Governor. He was, he, Hal was, I was going to show the photos um, that you took candidly that night at his 90th birthday party. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you, you sent me later, there were these beautiful shots of me and Charlie, like having just a, a conversation. And, and you, I didn't even know you were taking pictures. And, and you sent cool them to moment. me later. Cool little moment. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah. And I did talk about that in the tribute in Modern Drummer. You know, it's so great getting some drummers together and, honoring the great Hal Blaine, who we all know and love. And, mm. you know, I didn't realize it till later in life that my whole music 
uh, upbringing of listening to my parents' records, I was actually listening to Hal Blaine. I was listening to the freaking discography of the great Hal Blaine. Every favorite song was him. And uh, he was like so unbelievably instrumental in my drum development at a young age. You know, I'm playing just to my parents' records before I started getting into my own records and Beach Boys, Sonny and Cher, Monkeys, whatever, you know. I'll Everything, I know, I the know. The list and is endless. Elvis, incredible. And, and the most down-to-earth regular guy, right, that you could ever yeah. hope to, you know, uh, you know, he was just so, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I look at it too, Rob, the way I, I, I think about Hal is that a lot like Charlie and that so comfortable in their own skin that there was never any, I mean, you know, you hear people talk about, oh, he had no ego, but they really didn't. I mean, it was like, so, uh, you know, ego free, both of those guys, yeah. all, all these guys were talking yeah. about, you know? So yeah. let's segue into something real quick. You know, um, you're talking about my photo and the, and the drumming and all that, but I also do keynote speaking. And that's one thing that I bring up is every artist that I work with, I take a little bit of them. Like, okay, what can I learn from this guy? Like, you know, you, you, we learn, we're, we're sponges. We learn from yeah. people. And, you know, my big takeaway from guys like Hal Blaine and, and Charlie and uh, Jim Keltner and Steve Gett, you know, they're just who they are. And they're just amazing human beings forget about amazing drummers, but they're just amazing guys. And, yeah. you know, I bring that with me, you know, everywhere I go, every interview I do, or every photo shoot or every interaction, you just try and be the best, uh, the best version of yourself. Yeah, yeah. And well that's said. why I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't do any of that stuff. I'm a fitness freak. And uh, I hope I can inspire you know, a few people out there, you know, look at your life and, you know, all these things that you're putting inside your body are manifesting and, and maybe not the best thing for, you know, being your ultimate self on the outside. So anyway, that's don't that's, want to turn this into an AA meeting. Not that I went no. to AA. <laughs> no, that's, I just, that's... Uh, at a young age, I decided I didn't want to, you know, keep anything uh, keep my dreams from happening. So you take all yeah. the negative stuff out, whether it be, you know, hanging out at a bar or whatever. I don't do that. I mean, my band plays in enough clubs. I don't need to go <laughs> do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so, sage advice. Anyway. No, that's, 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 you know what? I mean, you're trying to impart information to people that are wondering like what that, what your journey has been like and what it's taken for you to get to where you are. And, and we're really just scraping the surface on like, all the incredible stuff. I, I want to hold up the book just one more time. Please. And I, and I think there's a volume two in the works. In yeah, in see? the works. And you by the way, that. getting back to the work, you know, as a photographer, thanks. That's so cool. I love the cover. Scott Donnell, I love you, man. He was so instrumental and in helped me put together this book. Oh, I hand signed it. You hand signed it. I'll just tell you, my, my sister-in-law, my awesome uh, sister-in-law Tracy Firth my wife's love sister her. love her. um love her too she ordered this from you um when it came out in 2011 as a as a Christmas present for me yeah. totally surprised me she bought it from you and and you signed it for me and uh and you even mentioned me in it which but but getting it and and I knew about it and I was going to buy one myself and I was just so floored because it's such an amazing Thank you. Work, so. so that was, you know, what I was talking about earlier, like in my book. Yeah, I got Sammy Hagar. I got Barry Manilow. I got, you know, all these good Paul McCartney. I got all these other great musicians, but I wanted to make the book about drummers, too. That's why yeah. Vic Firth is in the book. I'm sure you guys were stoked yeah. to see yep. Vic in there. I mean, for me, just an honor to have Vic in there. And he's sitting in my car, which is really cool. That's right. Yeah. But, you yeah, know, yeah. guys like Vic, I wanted in there. And uh, Jim Keltner, I wanted to give him a double page spread. And, you know, just all the drummers that have made it. Billy Cobham's in there. You know, there's a lot of artists and a lot of drummers that I'd shot before volume one came out that didn't make the cut and i don't mean that in a negative way like i didn't think they were good enough to be in the book it's just that i ran out of room sure I, yeah. you know you can only make the book so big so you know volume two 
will be a lot of that and a lot of a ton of new stuff because that volume one is from 2012. Right. And I've done a lot of stuff since then. So I'm really excited about volume two and and um, how it's going to be a, a tribute and a forward by and you know i'm not giving anything away right now but yeah. it's going to be really sweet really special and i want people to know that you know it's just a part two a continuation so if you didn't make one and we've done a photo shoot chances are you'll be in two i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings by <laughs> excluding them but i just ran out of space and and people can buy can still buy volume one. That's is it like through Amazon or through you directly? Yeah, it's on both? Amazon and the ratings yeah. unbelievable. The five star ratings just like blow my mind. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's but the best place to get it is on my website robshanahan.art. Dot okay. art a r t. And you know one thing about COVID and seeing my schedule all of a sudden go totally blank which was really hard for me at first because, you know, for 25 years, I've been hitting it hard. You know, I've had a hard schedule, not a hard schedule, but a busy schedule, busy schedule yeah. flying all over the place, shooting, Working and a playing lot, with yeah. my band. And I loved it. And I felt like, um, you know, I didn't want it to end just continually shooting all the great artists and, and, traveling the world um, unbelievable where I've been able to go. And all of a sudden, uh, we were talking about this at our little sound check, March 10, 2020. It's like, boom, all of a sudden, everything started canceling, cancel, cancel, you know, we we're all going through COVID and we all lived yeah. through it. And we all did our best. And my wife and I and our daughter, we hunkered down here at the house. And fortunately, my wife, graphic designer works out of her office on the other end of the house. She's way over there. But I'm here and, you know, we had a lovely summer with our great daughter, Chloe, and uh, it was, it was looking back, it was really cool. I would have never done that. Who can take off a year to spend time right. with your, with your loved ones. But in the meantime, yeah. all this extra free time, I decided I needed to make a little pivot and I have all these photos sitting around. So I put together the website. I have the web gallery store, which I've been thinking about forever and ever and ever. Uh, you know, a place where people can go and buy some art for their walls, their collection, or add a photo to the wall, That's whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it's been working. I love it. It's really a lot of you know, fun. It, and I was gonna say just to 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 reminds me of our friend Steve Gadd, who similar situation had talked about doing a book forever, you know, like an instructional book, but like you you know, working all the time, traveling all the time on tour. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden COVID hits and he's got all this time and he yeah. puts out a book, which, and it's been a huge success. So yeah, there's been definitely, I have the book. Some... Yeah. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I got it for Christmas. I wish I could get through the whole thing. I can't, I'll be honest. I, uh, he asked me all the time, like, how are you doing with the book? How far? It's like, Steve, you don't want to know how far I've gotten because <laughs> it's a great book though there's you know i do use some of the exercises and well that's the beauty uh, of it it's the yeah. challenge you just gotta yeah. sit down you gotta you just gotta go into it and start working on this stuff and eventually just kind of like when we were 10 11 whatever age you were when you started drumming it's like figuring it out and all of a yeah. sudden it clicks and you know you're just kind of always developing and 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 building our vocabulary so a quick yeah. steve gad story you know yeah, i love yeah, steve yeah. to death i you know i get to go see and shoot him and we do all sorts of fun stuff together many many years ago at my gym i'm uh, i've been a member of gold's gym since early 90s forever right so we have this class called hardcore and it's like an hour of freaking boot camp ass kicking yeah uh high intensity physical fitness and there's this amazing girl you know it's filled with amazing girls that's why i'm in the class <laughs> i don't want to be out in the in the weight pit with the big guys i'm in the class with all the girls you know in the yoga pants and we're kicking ass and this awesome girl comes up to me and i had a yamaha drums shirt on she's like what's your deal with Yamaha? Are you a drummer? I'm like, yeah, I'm a drummer. We don't really talk about what we do in the class. We're just all like motivating each other. And she's like, oh, my dad's a, a drummer. And he, he's, you know, he's in, he works with Yamaha. He's a, he plays Yamaha. Maybe you know him, Steve Gadd. I'm like, <laughs> what? I've been Is working it Megan or Mary Beth? <laughs> Megan. 
Megan. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Megan yeah. is like, oh my, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Do I know him? Well, I'm a photographer and check this out. And we became fast friends and she's amazing. So whenever I see Steve, he's like, how's Megan doing? I'm like, she's kicking ass. She's yeah. tough. She's freaking awesome. A really great, great human being. And uh, she lives a couple miles from me and I haven't seen her much, you know, since COVID, but yeah. For a long time, like 10 years, I would see her three, four times a week in that Gold's Gym class. And it was a really cool thing. And she's an awesome person. And then she sure is. Yeah. Like a year before COVID, another girl pops in. I'm like, whoa, who's this? Who's this girl? She looks kind of familiar. And then, you know, we're all kind of whispering, like, okay, who's the new girl? She's really good, fit, and, you know, awesome. And 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 Megan says, Do you know who she is? Do you know who that is? I'm like, she looks familiar. And she's like, you you know her dad, Steven Tyler. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore. It's private. We keep everything private in that class, but um, just a lot of fun. It's a, it's a really cool class. Uh, that's what happens when you join a gym in, in LA, in Venice. You know, it's you know what's funny is I'll be working out. Like now they, they moved all the machines up to the parking lot and the class that we were in is now like a storage room. Long story. I didn't mean to get into a fitness talk, but no, that's okay. I'm like working out just the other day. And there's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He still works out at the gym and he's no there. Kidding. And I've said hi to him a few times. I actually uh, did a shoot with him many years ago. His attorney called me to do a shoot and I had to sign a bunch of non-disclosures. So I can't really talk about it, <laughs> but I did meet him and I did a shoot with him many, many years ago. But now I see him at the gym and I'm like, wow, there's freaking Arnold. And I go say hi yeah. and try yeah, not to, to bother him. But yeah, that's LA, you know, you never know who you're going to run into. I know. That's so cool. That's, that's, that's very cool. Well, you, you've, you've been around enough you know, folks like that, that, you know, what, what to do and what not to do, you know? So it's, uh, let's talk about Charlie. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, let's talk about Charlie and, and can I bring Billy in for a minute? We to, love uh, Charlie so much. Yeah. You know, I'll get um, lost and just thankful that I've been able to, you know, get to know the guy and have, have the career that I've had and him be a part of it or me be a part of his life. It's just so special and so amazing. And, you know, it's just, you never know when 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 someone's time is up and you can only be thankful for the time that you've had with them and thankfully i have the photos so i have more than just a memory i have you know something to look at and something tangible and uh it's just it's the big sad loss yeah yeah absolutely absolutely i you know i, I the the second to last time that I saw him and, you know, it was only for a short time at Hal's party, but um, it was the, um, I saw him later that year when they were on tour when they came through town, but, um, yeah. but 2019, like, like said, right? 2019. You saw him in 2019. Yeah. August yeah, was it right around August. Cause I saw him four. I did four shows in August of 2019. Uh, two of them at MetLife stadium in Jersey. And I had a film crew with me following me and Charlie around right. backstage and just amazing. And I mean, still thinking about getting the so the stones lawyers <laughs> signing off on a release I mean, of Charlie and getting approval to have a film crew backstage with me is just still to this day is mind blowing, but that wouldn't have happened if Charlie didn't make it happen. Right. And Don McCauley, you know, being Don such McCauley a great advocate and, and making sure that all happened. And yeah, just just very, very thankful and grateful. I actually saw him in July. I saw him kind of early in the tour in July okay. in Boston. And, uh -huh. and I yeah, that was like at the afterwards. beginning of the tour because they rehearsed yeah. there and then launched there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and yeah. And, and just but like you said, thankful for all those times, like every single time. I remember I'd be driving home after seeing him, whether it was here in town or, if I, you know, if I was somewhere else in the country or the world where I saw him. And I, I would think like, you know, never in my life, same with Ringo, I like this, this will never be routine or, or maybe that's not the right word, but it's always going to feel special. And I, and I, you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm glad that I never, uh, let myself fall into any sort of complacency with that, you know, that Good. not that I, not yeah. that I would. Yeah. That it, I always recognized how special it was to yeah. spend even just a, a little bit of time. 
Yeah, that's good. Him. Never get complacent. Everything is special and magical. And yeah. I have a dear friend, a super actress, who I'm going to remain anonymous, but she always tells me when I walk into a room, this is her speaking, when I walk into a room, I walk with my heart forward. The first thing that enters the room is my heart and everything is a gift. Everything is an opportunity to make it a lovely experience. It's up to you as an individual. And um, that's how yeah. I've always approached these, these uh, times when you get to spend with these great artists of the world, you know? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, exactly. And, you know, in the case of Charlie, you know, you never know how long we're going to have with these guys. So, you know, it's, it, it really makes it that much more special, but I'm going to, um, if you got a few more minutes, I'm going to bring our friend, Billy Amendola, uh, into the room with us just to, to quickly talk. Who's about... Billy? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> he could, he's probably watching right now. Billy. See if you, see if you heard you say that. Turn on um, your camera, Billy. We want to see you. Yeah. And your, and your audio. Let's see. Connecting, connecting, connecting. Um, and I know we're sort of winding things down here, but he wanted to jump in for a second and and um, all right, maybe just Billy. talk about oh, the there magazine. He there he is. There There's he is. Billy. And I know we're sort of winding things down here. All right, mute mute the Facebook, Billy. You'll Billy. it'll make you crazy otherwise. Hey, hey. Billy. welcome, my friend, Billy and How Dola, are everybody. You guys? How are you? You know, I'm I'm not as uh, good looking and as famous as you guys, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you. You're just as good looking and famous. <laughs> just good to have you. Thanks for jumping. Enjoy, I've, I've been enjoying it. I've been. I spoke to Rob yesterday, so he reminded me that he was going to be on. And um, you know, I, I personally just wanted to thank you two guys for being such a a huge part of, of of this because this was my baby. You know, I I put this whole issue together with Mike Melender and Scott uh, Beanstalk. And, um, well, I, I won't say the whole entire thing. I'd say 95% of it. And the, this is my favorite cover at, of the day. Every day I have a different favorite cover. But the first person, <laughs> when, when I, you know, I wanted this to be the best tribute that it could possibly be for Charlie. So after I thought about it being the whole entire issue and, and, and got my way, I just called a bunch of my friends. And the first person I called was Rob because I knew Rob would be able to do that cover story. And he's like, but I, I never wrote a, a, I never really wrote a story. I was like, don't worry, you can do it. I know you can do it. And I knew the, you know, the, the photos were going to be incredible. So that's how it worked. And then I called you and cause I know your relationship with Charlie. And then I just called all my friends and who was going to say no, you know, everybody wanted it. Yeah. I had to say no after a while because you know, it would have been a book, yeah. but you know, I just, I, I just wanted to, Thank you guys personally. And uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm proud of it. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of it. Well, great job, Billy. Thank you. Thanks for having us, having me, having Rob and, and putting out such a beautiful issue and, and the issues. It's, it's really, it's spectacular. It really is. And, and you know, Rob, Rob you know, uh, I found out a few things because I mean, I know you both, you guys, we work together and know we, we know each other for over 30 years. So, um, you know, we all have the same mutual friends and everything. But Rob, I didn't know the camera. You know, my dad was a what year is that camera? Because my dad was a camera technician at Pentax in the 70s when they were at its oh, peak. Wow. wow, wow. Yeah, that would have been 1970. I'm guessing eight. That's well. And he passed away in 79. So he was yeah. at Pentax. Wow. Wow. Small world. I ran so many rolls of film through that camera and, you know, pre-digital, uh, you had to wait. Well, where I grew up, there was no one hour photo. So everything took like a week to get back. Like I dropped the film off at the corner drugstore a week later, the Kodak guy would drop it off. And uh, I'm like, man, I got to do something about that week. So I learned how to develop the film in my bathroom. I remember the first roll of negatives, like, wow, magic. <laughs> now we all have iPhones and it's beyond anything you could imagine. But uh, that's really how the love of photography started. And it was with the Pentax. So hats off to your grandpa. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah. you know, it's funny. It's, it's like, uh, you know, even when I started at Monotroma, we were still getting filmed. So I had to put all the four sheets together, 
you know. <laughs> oh, the yeah, ass. the CMYK sheets. Oh, DMYK, yeah, I know yep, about yep. that. Crazy. That's how far back. I mean, yeah, now, like you say, you press the button, it's, you know, it's done. I remember those days of, of um, you know, submitting the film for ads and things, and it was an entirely different, pro and I don't know anywhere near the, the technical stuff you guys do, but I just remember that, you know, how expensive it was to produce ads and, and for you guys to produce them in the magazine. And yeah, um, yeah it's, it's amazing how, how far it's come. Uh, but well, you know, both of you guys, you know, you, you guys were always the best at, at your jobs. I mean, you know, the 30 years that we've always, you know, that we've worked together, you two guys, you know, that's, I guess that's why we became friends all these years and we're still friends. I mean, you guys were at the top of your game, you know, Rob, you know, of course, one of the greatest photographers. And he's a pretty damn good drummer, too. That's yeah, so cool. Sure and Johnny, you're a really good drummer. And, and you know, what you did at, at Simmons, you know, that's how far back. And uh, DW and, and then, of course, Zildjian. So, um, Thanks, you know, you guys, you. hats off to you guys. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, buddy. Thank it's well, going is, back to, you know, bringing great. Uh, and bringing the love to whatever you do. And thankfully, we're all working in the industry that we love, drums, just uh, doing what we can. And we're all passionate. You know, we're still passionate about it. You know, we. <laughs> it looks like a lot of fun to everybody on the outside, but we put up with it and, um, you know, because we love it. Right. Yeah. Well, you make it what you can with what you have, and I'm doing the best that I can and trying to, uh, you know, watching guys like you guys through my career has been amazing, seeing how we all have grown and done things. And, and at the end of the day, all we have to go on is our reputation and our work, and uh, we just keep on producing the best we can. Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of yeah. that, I just want to yeah. say, you know, because I don't want Johnny's feed to blow up um, about, you know, everybody going crazy about some of the uh, subscription problems and the schedule problems with Modern Drummer. Um, I have nothing to do with that, that I never had anything to do with that. I wish I could help everybody in that department. I get phone calls from 70, 80 year old guys that have been subscribed from back in the day screaming at me that they didn't get their issue. And, you know, I can't do anything about that. All I can do is give you the best content and the best people that I can get. And that's it. And by the way, Rob, did you notice your name is not, your name was supposed to be on here. Uh, we all, you know, that we, I approved that. But, yeah, but that's a not, bone I'm going to be but, picking but very it's soon. Not. Yeah, I will be picking that bone soon. I didn't know we were going to get into that right now. Yeah, we, we, we probably no, shouldn't we're not get gonna, into we're that not, right we're now. Not, we're not going to get it. We're not going to get into no. it. But Johnny's got friends in Boston. I have friends in Staten Island. If anybody starts robbing these photos, it won't be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can say too, Bill, you, you hit me to the to the digital version of this back in the fall when when it came out. And, uh, and, I, and I know people want to get their magazines, but in the meantime, you know, I, I, I said it last week, uh, you know, subscribe to the, to the digital version and, uh, and, and check out the magazine because it's a beautiful tribute to Charlie. It's just, it's all that information and more is there. So, yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, and like I said, my main thing was I wanted to thank you guys. Both thank of you, you guys. Billy. Thank you. So thank I'm going to jump off because let you guys say goodbye and um i'll see you hopefully soon because hopefully we can get back out into the world yeah i hope so hang yeah. in there billy i'll see you man yeah see thanks you soon. Billy. Love you guys love you too brother thanks for jumping in bye-bye thank you see you soon and rob i know we're getting we're getting uh toward the end here too and i appreciate you spending so much time and sure man and uh this has been great you know it's it's always one of those things where i know i'm going to wish I'd asked you 10 more things once we finished, finish the show today, but um, any, any, any more, um, any final thoughts or any more things you want to talk about projects you're working on right now, things we should look out for. Uh, well, way? always something, always working on stuff. Uh, by the way, are you a golfer? I'm not a golfer. No. Any I'm golfers not. out there? Anyone know Nick Faldo? He's a friend. I met him 
through an old friend of mine. Uh, we kind of connected a year or so ago and became fast friends and he was in town and wanted to meet for a for a tea. So we chose the Peninsula Hotel, which happened to be Charlie's favorite hotel and where he stayed yeah. when he was yeah. here in town. So I got I went and met Nick Faldo uh, late afternoon yesterday and had a tea and I brought up my whole story with Charlie and how Charlie stayed here. It was lovely. Oh, that's Nick nice. Baldo's, he's, he's been knighted and he's from London and uh, he's English and it was a really fun story. And anyway, uh, I'm working on something with him. You were asking me about what projects oh, cool. I'm working on. So yeah, yeah, working on something with him and second book coming out, the website, dot .art, robshanahan.art. You know, there's always yeah. marketing stuff that I'm involved in. And if you haven't signed on yet, go to my website, sign on, because I do these really fun emails, behind the scenes stories of some great images that uh, maybe you've seen, maybe you want to know a little bit behind the scenes or jump on my Instagram, Shanahan photo. Uh, and as mentioned before, keynote speaking, I got one coming up in Vegas in a couple of weeks. Uh, March 1st, I'm speaking for LiveVox, which is an internet behemoth, and it's the coolest thing being asked to keynote speak for these telecom giants. I've done so many of those, and I love it, love it, love it. It's so That's much great. fun, and yeah. it's something that I never, ever thought would come and fall into my lap, but, I, you know, kind of a quick story. I was at a dinner party from a country music star and his neighbor was there who happened to be a VP of a telecom company. And we started chatting and turns out he was the hugest Van Halen fan on the planet. <laughs> and we became fast friends. And next thing I know, he hires me to keynote for his company and just started everything. This is back in 2016. And, wow. you know, you just never know where the life is going to go, where anything's yeah. going to happen. You just need to walk in with your heart forward and, uh, present and do your best and i think that's you know, what you do and what we do and um, i can't thank you enough for having me on jd hope we pleasure. didn't bore everyone with these long-winded stories this has been great man i was just going to say you're you're the perfect guy for that and and that's like a whole other you know how great that with all this other success i'll just say it's amazing that you found this other outlet that you can now um utilize or 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 you know kind of put your talent into you know yeah, very fun speaking. never thought i would Great. you know yeah. like i never thought it would be something i would be into i mean speaking in front of an audience it's very hot very nerve-wracking for some yeah. people but yeah. you know if you're not nervous uh what's the old saying if you're not nervous then maybe you shouldn't be doing it because those butterflies is what you know creates the energy and I yeah. remember my very first one, a thousand executives in the San Diego ballroom. And uh, I'm standing there backstage waiting for the thing to open. I walk out and I'm like, literally like 30 seconds. They're giving me the countdown. I'm like, what the hell are you going to say? And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> but here we go. The door opened out I went and oh, it was amazing. And it was really was fun because that night they hired my band to play at the Hard Rock with Sammy Hagar. We opened for Sammy Hagar. That's telecom money. They have money to have those kind of events. So yes, sir. Yeah. I did the keynote. They bought a thousand books. So I signed a thousand books for everyone in attendance. And then we went and opened for Sammy. And so check this. So I happened yeah. to, I pulled this out in case we started talking about keynote. I had Sammy come out on stage with me at the end of the keynote as my special guest look at that look at that and wow. here's the here's the uh vp of century like my good buddy got me and sammy out there together how much fun <laughs> all right that's my little 30 second commercial on awesome. my keynote speaking stuff no i wanted to get that in there i'm glad you did and, and thank you again so much for doing this um Anthony Casino, always with the great questions. And we're going to let, we're going to, we have to throw this one more question at you because it's sure. very important. As a fellow lefty, he's asking Rob, being left handed drummer, setting up in the usual manner for a right handed player, were you inspired to play this way because of Ringo? Great question, as always, Anthony. Great question. No, it wasn't. It was the way my drum kit or the drum kit at my high school was set up. So, so you had to. I remember my sixth grade. Um, you know, going through the Hal Leonard books with my band director. And then uh, in the summer of sixth and seventh grade is when I got on the kit at the school and had the summer lessons on the kit before I got into the swing band. 
uh, it was set up writing. It was, that's the way it was. I sat down and just went yeah. at it right there. So I always played right-handed, but I am a lefty. I, I'm a dominant left hand, uh, which interestingly, and we never really talked about drum technique stuff, but I don't know, for some reason, the two and four on a snare, whether I'm playing traditional or, you know, match grip, it's just, I don't know, it's hard to explain unless someone's lefty and plays on a right-handed kit. I just love being, that being my dominant hand. I always feel like I know where that two and four yeah. go. Like I don't even have to think about it. It's just, it's hard to explain. Just my no, dominant I, hand. I was going to say, I've, I've always looked at Ringo having that advantage of being left-handed and having that dominant left hand playing righty so that, you know, he has like an advantage in terms of playing stuff like his left hand is stronger than a lot of people's left hands would be. I, I play left-handed drums and my right hand is really weak. It's really, and I do, I do stuff right-handed too, but um, I'm a mess. I wish I'd learned to play like you and like Ringo right-handed and I'd have a stronger left hand. You, you know what I mean? I, I totally like get have, it. I, I yeah. know exactly what you mean. And in a way, having my left hand being dominant, my right hand is more of like the color, the, the, the feel kind of, I don't know how to explain it, like the meat and potatoes of drumming, you know, the kick yeah. and the snap yep. and all this other stuff. And maybe that's why Charlie's, you know, he's not a big frilly drummer. He's just, you know, in that groove. So yeah. I love having the hard, strong, dominant left hand and the right yeah. hand just being kind of the color, feely, splashy symbol guy you know like charlie just works yeah, i don't know yeah, it's hard to exactly. explain. Uh, but actually getting back to ringo that was my first conversation with ringo and when i told him i was left-handed playing right and he's like oh yes and i'm like yeah i know why you do this and you get your <laughs> symbol over here your left hand he's like you get it that was it yeah yeah we'll have to do this again and we're just going to talk drums we're just going to talk drums and ringo and charlie and Keltner. <laughs> and Jim. And you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, anytime. And maybe you feel like we didn't touch on uh, enough topics, but if you ever want to have me back on, sure. Be glad. I'd to. love to. Yeah, absolutely. I will. Um, Rob, thank you so much, my brother. Yeah, this man. has been so much fun. Um, keep up the great work that you do. And uh, I hope we get to see each other in person again soon. Great. Yeah, I'd love that. Um, I'll let you know when I'm back East Coast or when you're out here, we'll see each other, of course. And uh, by the way, if anyone has any questions they were afraid to ask or didn't want to type in, you know, I'm, I love when people reach out, people freak out when I write back or call them or answer my phone, my phone number is on my website, or if you want to send me an email, it's right there. Great. Happy to take your calls any of your questions. So come on. That's great. It. And, and I should tell you, Rob, there's been, I, I, you're um, tagged on this broadcast. So I think you'll see a bunch of the questions and comments, um, hopefully on your Facebook page, or you could come back to mine and see there's really great um, comments and, and oh, great. Yeah. So it's, we've had a great, a great group of people watching today. So. Well, now I know what I'm doing this afternoon. I got to sit and answer all those, <laughs> but I will. I'll Good get man. to them. Thanks. Buddy. All right, All right we'll John, sit. thank you so much. Thank you for everything. And uh, everyone listening, thanks for joining us. Love you all. Love, uh, love that we're at least trying to do what we can through the uh, COVID and your show is the right thing to do and, and, yeah. and keep us all entertained and just thanks, be thank more thankful to be on with you today, JD. And uh, we'll do it again, right? Yeah, I look forward to it. Thanks, Rob. And sit tight. By the way, minute. You did okay. invite me. This this is actually my second opportunity on the show, but I blew yeah. you off the first time by accident, <laughs> total accident. And I have to tell people why. You invited me and you had Greg on and you had Don McCauley on. And I who it was supposed to be like a, a Charlie. It was, it was one of the Charlie episodes. And I yeah. forget which, but it was, a you know, they were all great. I think it was the one with Don and, and maybe Greg and maybe it was... Um, Oh gosh, I'm, boy, I'm trying to think. It might have been Kenny Jones, or it could have been Stan Lynch. But a, a I was of, in yeah. Minnesota at the time. The Rolling Stones were playing uh, my beloved Minnesota Vikings stadium. So 
before Charlie passed, before we knew, you know, what was going to happen, I, I, mm -hmm. I made arrangements um, for two pits. I got two pit, pit tickets for that event, for that show, because I wanted to hopefully, maybe, possibly bring my dad back to meet Charlie, because I introduced my dad to Ringo, to Neil Peart, uh, which is just so cool. I love doing oh, that. It's so much yeah. fun to show my dad how full circle my life has gone from, you know, all the working out in my drum room at, at home to this. Anyway, it was fun uh, thinking about doing that. But so anyway, my wife and I were in Minnesota when the Stones were playing there and Bernard Fowler wanted to have a lunch. So next day after the show, we took him to lunch and uh, we ended up going uh, doing some sightseeing in Minnesota. And I totally blew you off and I apologize. And uh <laughs> Anyway, I told you I'd make it up to you. And here we are. <laughs> Thank you. I remember, and I and I I didn't feel like you blew me off. You had you, Bernard Fowler wanted to go hang out with you. Come on, I, I'd have blown myself off for that. I <laughs> anytime. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, Bernard's a cool dude, and it was uh, it was a good hang in Minnesota. It was fun showing him okay. the sights of uh, of my beloved hometown, if you will. All right, let's go. Right. We'll see you next time, John to Christopher. Thanks, Rob Shanahan. Sit tight All for right. a minute, buddy, in the in the room, and I'll I'll say goodbye in just a minute. Okay, bud. Bye. Thanks, buddy. Thanks again, Rob Shanahan. Everybody.